Welcome back. This is chapter 4, video 5, introducing double arrow introduction and elimination. These are the final two rules of the basic rule set. And they're actually quite easy because they're just double versions of rules we've seen before. Double versions of the arrow rules. Let's look first at double arrow elimination. This is pretty simple. If you remember how arrow elimination worked, you had to have an arrow statement and the antecedent that then allowed you to get the consequent. Well here we're dealing with a double arrow so we don't speak in terms of the antecedent and the consequent rather with a double arrow statement and the left hand side you can derive the right hand side. But the good thing about the double arrow being double is that we can also move from right to left. So given an arrow statement and the right hand side we can deduce the left-hand side. Here's a quick example derivation. So we've got three primary assumptions, and our goal is to derive E and A. Now, if we want to derive E and A, we're going to need the A, so we might as well get that out of line one right away with an AND elimination. We need to get the E, and E is the right-hand side of the double arrow statement in line three, so if we could get the D, that would be wonderful, because double arrow elimination will then allow us to get the E. How can we get the D? Well, it's the left-hand side of a double arrow statement in line 2, so if we had the B, we could get the D. And in fact, we can easily get that B from line 1, just like we got A from line 1. And AND elimination. So now, with B in line 5, Double arrow elimination with 2 and 5 will give us the D. So as you see, this is a nice rule. When you have a double arrow, you can do it in either direction. As long as you have one of the pieces, you can follow the double arrow to the other piece. Now we have the D in line 6. So with line 3, we can get the E, 3, 6, double arrow elimination. So we just did two double arrow eliminations, one in each direction. Now to get the goal, we just have to make the conjunction of 4 and 7. E and A, 4, 7, and introduction. Pretty straightforward. It's just like arrow elimination, only because you've got a double arrow, you can do it in either direction. You still need two pieces. You need the double arrow statement, and then one or the other side will allow you to move across the double arrow. Now, double arrow introduction also is not very complicated. It's just doing arrow introduction twice. For example, showing that P leads to Q in one subderivation, and then in a separate subderivation at the same level, showing that Q leads to P. Those two things together will allow you to get the double arrow statement. Here's a quick example. Here's a derivation where we're trying to just derive L if and only if M. Now in order to do that, we're going to need a subderivation that starts with L and leads to M, and one that starts with M and leads to L. So we can set that up pretty easily. First, let's put our goal in at the bottom here, L if and only if M. And let's start a subderivation leading from L as an assumption and hopefully making our way to M as a subgoal. Now notice we have this biconditional here, L or H, then M and N. We can't do biconditional elimination on line 2 just yet because we don't have or H. But if you recall, or introduction will allow us to get that pretty easily. All we have to do is take the L in line 3 and put or H onto it. 3 or introduction. And now line 4 matches the right hand side of line 2, thereby giving us a double arrow elimination to get M and N from 2 and 4 double arrow elimination.
And then, of course, a conjunction elimination on line 5 gives us an M. So we've done half the work here. We've shown that L leads to M in a subderivation. Now we need, in a separate subderivation on the same level, start by assuming M and show that we can get to L. This is a little bit easier. As you can see, line 7 matches the antecedent of 1, so an arrow elimination will give us L and J from 1 and 7 arrow elimination. And then it's a simple AND or conjunction elimination from line 8 to get us the L. And now 3 through 6 shows us L leads to M. 7 through 9 shows us M leads to L. So we can derive in line 10 L if and only if M. And we cite both subderivations 3 through 6, 7 through 9, double arrow intro. As you can see, it's very straightforward. If you know how to do arrow introductions, all you're doing here are two arrow introductions to get the double arrow. Note as well that the order of the subderivations doesn't really matter. The first subderivation starts with L, and L winds up on the left-hand side, but we could just as easily have used those two subderivations to derive M if and only if L. It'd still be 3 through 6, 7 through 9, double arrow, introduction. The fact that L appears as the assumption in the first subderivation doesn't mean it needs to appear on the left. It can also appear on the right. Another way to put this point is the order of the subderivations doesn't matter. This concludes our introduction of the 11 basic derivation rules. The next video will discuss some derivation strategies and will address some more complicated scenarios.